I'm honored to be here on the territories of the Lekwungen speaking people of the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations. I'm pleased to be here today with Dr. Mary Ellen Turpel Lafont, independent investigator. As many of you will recall, on June uh, the 18th of this year, I received notification of serious allegations of racist practices in an emergency room or rooms in BC, whereby staff were guessing the blood alcohol levels of patients as a type of game. On June 19th, I appointed Dr. Mary Ellen Turpel Lafont to investigate the allegations, determine the facts, and to re recommend actions to make our public health care system a safe place for every person in BC who seeks its care. To that end, the scope of the independent investigation included a comprehensive review of ind Indigenous specific racism in the BC health care system. Dr. Turpel Lafont has shared with me her recommendations and report and we are here today to share with you all the outcomes of this report. It is my honor to introduce to you Dr. Turpel Lafont, who will walk us through the findings of her report. First of all, I'd like to thank Minister Dix for the introduction and for being here today to receive this report. I too would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people and to recognize and thank the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations for sharing their territory with us. I'd also like to acknowledge that there are a number of First Nations chiefs and leaders and Métis leaders and supporters who wanted to be here for the release of this report and who have been actively involved in ensuring that all of the information needed to prepare this report was made available to me. Because of um, the COVID-19 restrictions, they're not able to be here in person, but I certainly want to say to them that I feel strongly their presence today, even though they were not able to be physically here with us. In addition, before I begin to discuss the details of the report, I would like to offer a gentle warning to Indigenous people watching, listening, or reading the report that this report includes topics that may trigger memories of your own culturally unsafe personal experiences, those of your friends, family, and community. If you require emotional support in dealing with this information, we have provided support numbers for services that are available to engage with you to address trauma that you may experience in processing the information in the report. As Minister Dix indicated in June of this year, I was appointed by him uh, to conduct an independent review into some specific and highly disturbing allegations of racism in British Columbia emergency rooms, and to take a wider look at whether anti-Indigenous discrimination exists in the provincial healthcare system as a whole. I assembled a small team with expertise required to do the job, and we've been very busy since then. I'd like to thank and acknowledge the team that supported me with this work. As you know, the allegation was that there is an organized Price is Right game involving guessing the blood alcohol levels of Indigenous people in BC emergency rooms. Our detailed examination of those allegations found no evidence of an organized game as originally depicted, namely with prizes and locating and occurring throughout emergency rooms across British Columbia. What I did find was anecdotal and episodic evidence of multiple activities that resemble those allegations, but not as a game with that name, not as widespread as alleged, and in places not just targeting Indigenous people and Indigenous patients. However, and this is a very significant however, our review that I'm releasing today, both the long report and short report that's available to you, found much more widespread and insidious problem, meaning if there had been simply a game played away from patients, as difficult as that would have been to make that finding, what I found in fact was at the point of care, there is direct prejudice and racism touching all points of care and impacting Indigenous people in BC. Now that doesn't mean that every Indigenous person, every First Nations, Métis or Inuit person in BC who seeks care at the point of care will experience direct personal racism today. It just means that any Indigenous person could face it because it is that pervasive and entrenched in the system. We should all find that conclusion deeply troubling. And I want to tell you, take a few minutes to tell you how we reach that conclusion. Our review collected the voices of nearly 9,000 Indigenous patients, family members, third-party witnesses, healthcare workers. We had two online surveys that we initiated. And you will note in the report 
In the long report on page 30, you can see the graphic of what we heard and what the report is based on, or in the short report on page 15, it has the same. And the voices of the people we heard from include, for instance, today I was connecting with an 86-year-old First Nation elder who actually took the time to complete the survey. And I'm so thankful for the fact that Indigenous people particularly were keen to engage and to explain in detail what their experiences had been and say that they were so appreciative of finally having an opportunity to come forward and talk about it in a safe way. We also had direct submissions from 600 people who shared their detailed experiences of either being victims of discrimination, racism or prejudice, or as healthcare workers observing it directly in their workplace. We examined health utilization and outcomes of approximately 185,000 First Nations and Métis patients and did an unprecedented examination of data to inform our findings. The two reports that are out today will be followed up within the next month with a detailed data report which will dive more deeply into those um, conclusions. We conducted more than 150 interviews with staff and key informants who work in the system. We examined more than 700 health authority and regulatory college documents, conducted extensive literature re review, and had multiple submissions from healthcare and community groups and organizations. Examining all of this evidence, we found pervasive interpersonal systemic racism that adversely, adversely affects not just patient and family experiences, but also long-term health outcomes for Indigenous people in BC. I'll give you some examples of the things we heard. 84% of Indigenous people who engaged with us through the survey said that they experienced discrimination based on their identity, race, or ancestry while ac accessing health care. Only 16% of Indigenous people reported never having experienced direct personal discrimination at the point of care. However, it's noted that they may too have experienced systemic barriers, obstacles, and uh, different outcomes than other British Columbians. More than one third of the thousands of non-Indigenous people who took our healthcare worker survey reported witnessing interpersonal racism or discrimination against Indigenous patients and families and friends at the point of care. Indigenous people consistently told us, and this was confirmed by the healthcare workers who responded and the cases, that they are subject to negative assumptions, negative assumptions based on prejudice, based on racism, based on beliefs that should not exist in our healthcare system. Among the top negative assumptions that are circulating in our healthcare system today is the idea that Indigenous patients and people are less worthy, that they're alcoholics, that they're drug seeking, that we're bad parents, frequent flyers, non compliant, and incapable of adhering to treatment and medical advice. Those are biases and prejudices that are active in our healthcare system. Often these kinds of stereotypes and prejudices lead to poor care at the point of service. And what I find in detail in the report today is what does that type of stereotype typing result in? What kind of discrimination? What does it look like in our BC healthcare system? Well, what it looks like are the following. It, it looks like abusive interactions at the port of care, point of care. That can be verbal and physical abuse. It results in denial and delay of service. It results in ignoring and shunning inappropriate pain management, medical mistakes because people do not see what the patient and hear what the patient is saying and, and, um, uh, and suggesting is the issue, and a disdain by some healthcare workers for cultural protocols and First Nations and Métis traditional healing practices. Um, as I noted, I'll be releasing a separate data report to address a number of these particular issues. But our data review shows that racism limits access to medical treatment and negatively affects the health and wellness of Indigenous people. And I need to note that we found with all of the data and information that came forward in this review that Indigenous women are disproportionately impacted by racism in healthcare and racism in healthcare contributes to them being even more harshly impacted um, by the current pandemic and the opioid overdose crisis. And Indigenous people are more harmed at this time by these twin and serious epidemics and crises that we're dealing with. 
Um, in terms of looking at the complaints process, um, I did look at all of the complaints that have been sit submitted by Indigenous people to re regulatory colleges and health authorities. We looked at all of the issues that had surfaced in the Sanyas Indigenous Cultural Safety Program, and we looked more broadly at health system utilization data, meaning how often are Indigenous peoples receiving primary care, what do they present at an emergency room for, how are they treated when they get there, how are they treated in hospital, how do they access things like cancer screening, are they having the same degree of access and support as other British Columbians. And on every one of these areas, we found differential treatment for Indigenous people. In terms of health condition prevalence, acute and chronic disease in British Columbia, we found that Indigenous peoples are disproportionately suffering on that front. In terms of all health outcomes, we found significant differences and differences impacted by prejudice and discrimination that begins a cycle that's reported on in quite a bit of detail in the report, and you will see a graphic that describes that in the short report at page 15, um, pardon me, in the long report at page 15 and in the short report at page 18. What all of this information led us to conclude is that we have a major problem with Indigenous specific racism and prejudice in BC healthcare. Yes, the problem is rooted in, a, in long-standing entrenched practices that have negatively treated Indigenous people, such as uh, colonialism, residential schools, being in segregate, segregated Indian hospitals, being taken out of the mainstream system and put into a substandard system for a long time. And this has never been thoroughly examined, so I'd like to acknowledge and thank Minister Dix um, and the Government of British Columbia for inviting this examination, as I believe this is the first evaluation that has been done in Canada in such a systemic way of how Indigenous people experience racism, how it affects the treatment they receive, and the outcomes that we need to address as a society to have a more equal and fair healthcare system with a better quality of life for all people. Um, in terms of uh, the recommendations, you'll see that the report um, has 24 recommendations. Um, I'm not going to go into all the list here. They're included in the reports that are released today. Taken together, I believe they create a blueprint for rooting out racism and discrimination and ensuring that the human rights of Indigenous people to respect, dignity, and equitable health care are upheld. I just want to be very clear that, I, that there should be no mistake made about this report. It is essential in British Columbia that everyone in the health care system must eliminate all forms of racism and discrimination against Indigenous people and must all pull together to ensure that that is done. The 24 recommendations look at three things that I think are important, or three domains of this discrimination and racism. And that is the need to change the beliefs that have allowed this to continue, including the beliefs and um, learning that our health professionals have. We need to change behaviors in terms of having greater degree of accountability in the system for when racism is identified, that it can be addressed and that the concept of health care quality includes receiving health care that is not discriminatory, that is free from all forms of racism toward Indigenous people, and recommendations about system reform. And to be clear that at this point, I'm not confident that we have a systemic approach to tackling racism against Indigenous people in BC. I can say, though, that it's important that the government of British Columbia, Minister Dix, sets a tone for how we respond to this at the point of care. Um, and I, I would note that the work that was done to evaluate this was very much assisted by the fact that a year ago, British Columbia adopted the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act. And so in the past year, there's been greater understanding of provisions of the UN Declaration, such as Article 24, that talk about Indigenous people having the right to access health care free from discrimination. The shifts that were made a year ago are starting to come down into the healthcare system, and I can see that with this report and review. There's a greater degree of openness and willingness to shift at the point of care in all the various partners in the healthcare system, but it is ripe to make those changes. Some of the major issues I'm calling upon um, Minister Dix to consider uh, with partners from the First Nations leadership and community, First Nations Health Authority, First Nations Health Council, and Métis Nation of BC 
or create a new BC Indigenous Health Officer, a BC Indigenous Health Representative and Advocate that can ensure the complaints and concerns of Indigenous people are processed through the quality review process and are heard. And I'm recommending an Associate Deputy Minister of Indigenous Health. These are just a few issues, but they will provide much needed leadership to assist Minister Dix, assist the health system more generally to go forward. I'm also recommending some innovation in education, like the consideration of a joint degree program in medicine and Indigenous medicine. So there can be more respect paid for Indigenous knowledge and a higher value placed on the work that is needed um, to respectfully engage and ensure that Indigenous people are providing service in the healthcare system at all places and service that reflects their experience as well as the mainstream medical training program. It's very important that the province continue efforts to strengthen employee speak up culture and this is something that the provincial ombudsman has reported on before and in the province of British Columbia in December 2019 the Public Interest Disclosure Act came into force. It's very important that that Public Interest Disclosure Act apply without further delay to the healthcare sector. And I say that because in the context of this review, having engaged with many people directly in the system, their fear of bringing things forward, their lack of understanding of what the pathway is to bring things forward is not helpful to address the racism. It's not helpful for workers in the system. It's not helpful for patients. So I would like to see the government apply the Public Interest Disclosure Act to healthcare employees without further delays. In concluding, I would just say that I've met with Minister Dix. He's provided an assurance to me that his ministry and government will look at these recommendations. Um, and I want to take a minute again just at the end to say how grateful I am for the opportunity to do this work. I've had unprecedented cooperation by everyone in the healthcare system.